From slavery to freedom, Gilad Shalit returned to Israel Tuesday after more than five years in the clutches of his Hamas captors. Looking quite thin and a bit bewildered, Gilad was flown almost immediately by helicopter from the Gaza-Israeli border to the Talnof Air Base. Prime Minister Netanyahu was the first to greet and hug Gilad, who had been kidnapped during his military service at the age of 19. Netanyahu led Gilad to his father Noam for the embrace they had surely both dreamt of. Noam had fought tooth and nail to keep the cause of his son's freedom in the public eye, and he succeeded in getting Gilad back alive. Prime Minister Netanyahu held a press conference at the base, along with Defense Minister Ehud Barak and IDF Army Chief Benny Gantz. The three had led the charge to approve the controversial deal for Gilad's release, it exacted a high price, letting over 1,000 jailed Palestinian militants and terrorists go free. While a recent poll found that 70% of the Israeli public supports the prisoner exchange deal, 50% also say they're worried about future attacks. Netanyahu once again defended his decision to free Shalit. Mutual responsibility, he said, is not a slogan but a cornerstone of Israeli society. But he also acknowledged the pain of families who will have to bear seeing the murderers of their loved ones leave prison. While thousands in the nearby West Bank and Gaza celebrated the return of some who boast of killing and harming Israelis, Netanyahu indirectly slammed the festivities. In Israel, no one celebrates murderers, he said. The sanctity of life is an ancient value of the Jewish people. Despite the promises, the best of intentions can't beat the statistics. Recent studies have shown 60% of released Palestinian militants return to violence against Israel. Whether the separation fence or a better trained Palestinian police force can make a difference today is a matter of debate. Residents in Gilad's hometown of Mitzpeh Hila decorated the streets for his arrival. The most popular poster read, How good it is that you're coming home. Some young children planted trees in Gilad's honor and painted placards for him. Residents and the media set up camp down the block from the Shalit home. The first images of Gilad on Egyptian television moved the crowd. And I was shaken. I was shaking, all my body was shaking because I was excited and like I remember him since I was young and now I see him coming home after five years. It's amazing, I, amazing, just amazing. I don't have any words to say except amazing. He looked quite good, he talked, he's standing on his two feet. So I hopefully everything is okay with him and hopefully we'll see him here in uh, his mother's hands and then we'll say we did it not only for Gilad Shalit but also for the Israeli moral for the Israeli values that you never never leave someone behind Mickey Goldwasser lost her son Ehud in an attempted Hezbollah kidnapping just two weeks after Gilad was abducted to be um Another many years of feelings about how we feel about uh, Ron Arad. It's a wound that it's never, never will heal, and we still carry it. And it's good that we don't need to um, put also for Gilad, you know, the same. And I think it was a right decision. Israel's failure to rescue POW Ron Arad after the Yom Kippur War has hovered over Gilad's saga like a warning almost from the beginning. After hundreds had waited for hours, Gilad's homecoming was almost called off. He felt so weak at the base that his family considered taking him straight to the hospital. Gilad Shalit is now on the last leg of his journey home. In just a couple of minutes, his helicopter will take off from the Talnov base and head here to his home in the north in Mitzpeh Hila. Thousands are waiting to greet him, to get a glimpse of his car, and to welcome back the boy that was taken from his family and from the country five and a half years ago. Police cleared the streets to get ready for his arrival. <laughs> 
The helicopters carrying Gilad and his family soon flew overhead. They looped around the town twice, once to show Gilad how many Israelis had come to welcome him, a second time just to make him happy, insiders later told us. And then the moment so many had waited for. The van carrying Gilad drove up. Applause and cheers rang out as the car whisked around the corner. Few could contain their excitement. The dancing and the singing broke out here just moments after the car carrying Gilad Shalit arrived and went on to his home. People are singing, they, they're crying, they're hugging each other. This is a very small town, only about 600 people, and some of the children here actually have known Gilad since kindergarten. It's an extremely emotional moment. I saw him just for a few, few seconds. He looks okay, I think, I don't know. Much better than I thought that it's gonna be. Uh, and uh, somebody said that he was smiling and uh, you know, just did hi and, um, and they're fine, they're fine. And finally they're at home, glad. Whew, I can't believe it. <laughs> Amazing. Um, we did it, he's here, he did it. He did it. He's here. He's home. Um, it's it's incredible. It's beautiful. It's it's you know, the power of life, the power of faith, the power of community, the power of true values that we have in this country. It's amazing, amazing. Noam came out to thank the public for such a warm reception. Gilad, he said, is happy to be home and is feeling fine. He wants to talk to the public. His father said. But it's too difficult for him right now after so much time alone in captivity. Noam said little about his son's ordeal, except that he was allowed to listen to the radio and knew about the public's campaign for his release. Gilad is home tonight, but surely tomorrow another difficult chapter begins. The process of recovery and reintegration after so many long days and nights hidden away from the world. Jordana Miller, JN1, Mitzbehila.